Hello world, it's me. When we left off with this M80 board, we had M1 strobes coming out of the processor indicating that it was going out and at least attempting to fetch instructions. Right now we don't have any code in this, there's no EEPROM, so it's just getting whatever comes in by default. Typically that's going to be zero zeros or FFs or sometimes you'll see the actual address being pulled back in as the data. But at any rate, what we're going to do now is confirm that this Z80 is operating and in this video we're going to actually confirm that it is reading code. So I have this hooked up to my logic analyzer. Let me capture a trace and we'll look to see what a bare Z80 without any opcodes that it's fetching looks like. I'm using the bottom eight channels of this analyzer to capture the address coming out of the Z80. And this is the read this flat line is the right because I'm not doing any writes. I don't have any, there's no code yet running, We're just watching the processor go. It's going out to the bus, it's fetching instructions, and it's just getting whatever happens to be there. It's either, a, you know, maybe it's just pulling in zeros or FFs. But we can see across the top, that is my refresh signal. And on this logic analyzer, I'm decoding this as a simple parallel. And I'm looking at the bottom eight bits of the address in simple parallel and I'm strobing that or I'm clocking that in with on the rising edge of the refresh. And we can look across the top when it analyzes that. This is in just hex. We can see that this is an incrementing number. So it was at 1F, 20, 21, 22, and so forth. This is increments all the way across and it will increment the bottom seven bits of this eight bit bus all the way up uh, to 7F and then it'll just roll back over. So this is the refresh. This is the address refresh where it puts out you know, the address and to refresh the dynamic memory. But of course this board doesn't use the dynamic memory. But we're going to use that to our advantage just to see if we can pull in opcodes and know what this processor is doing. If you go back and you, there's another video I did on the 8080 where they brought out the enable interrupt pin and so we're able to toggle that pin just specifically. That's one pin that we've got control of so that we can toggle it and see for sure if the processor is reading code and running our program. We're going to kind of do that same thing with the refresh. And let me go write a little code, come back, we'll pop it in here, and I'll show you what's going on. I wrote a little bit of test code, and this is just the start of it. I'll expand this code as I get more done on this board and learn more about it and things that I want to test. But to begin with, I want to make sure that it is going to go out and fetch instructions from the base EEPROM. And I mean, that's a big step. If I can get instructions out of the base EEPROM and the processor processes those correctly, it means I don't have to go digging into this board and finding out, you know, if all the address lines and everything are okay and if the decoder is working okay. That's all taken care of if I can demonstrate that I can get code out of that base EEPROM. So let's look at this little piece of code. So I org this at zero. I have a loop here that's reset R, which R stands for the refresh here. And what I'm going to do is, as I mentioned, the 80 or the Z80 has this refresh register. And what happens is it starts, it fetches an opcode. While it's processing that opcode, it goes back out to the bus and it puts an address on the bus and it toggles the refresh line. And again, the idea is that if you have dynamic RAM out there, that's when it refreshes that dynamic RAM. Because remember, dynamic RAM constantly has to be read to refresh the, 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 uh, the cells. Okay, so this register, normally it just sits there and it just increments whatever value is in it, and it does that every machine instruction. But the programmer actually has control over what value is put into that register for the refresh. So in other words, the programmer can control what address it goes out and starts that refresh. Now, because they didn't have, I guess, a lot of foresight to realize that we were going to need refresh with more than seven bits, they only use those bottom seven bits of this address for the refresh. So they only count from zero to 128 when they do this refresh. So that leaves the eighth bit. And an interesting little tidbit is that if the programmer sets this register, this refresh register, whatever they set the 8th bit to, it always stays the same. So if you set the 8-bit to a 1, 
then that will stay one and it will go ahead and it will refresh then from eight zero to FF. And so it'll count up from eight zero until it gets to FF. Then when it gets to FF, it'll roll back to eight zero. So it'll leave that most significant bit as one. That's an interesting little tidbit that we're going to use here to confirm that this isn't just random stuff coming out of EEPROM. It's actually doing what we want it to do. And of course, we could we could write a lot more code and make this much more complex, but this is just about the simplest thing that you can do to verify that the Z80 is working and getting that code. So what I'm going to do here is I load into register A as 00, and then I send that, I load that value into the refresh register. So now the refresh register is going to have 00. I then load FF into register A, and I send that to the refresh register, and then I jump back to the beginning of this loop. So what we should see is if we look at the address coming out onto the bus due to the refresh cycle, it's going to be incrementing. When the program does this first load, puts 00 into A, it's going to increment. And then when it moves A into the refresh register and sets that refresh register to zero, we should see the refresh register go to zero. Now it's going to move FF into A, and so we should see that refresh register increment. It's then going to move that FF from register A into the refresh register, and at that point we should see it go to FF. It's now going to do a jump, and while it does that jump, it should increment the refresh register. It's going to go back, and it's going to reload 00 into A. And in doing so, it's going to increment the refresh register again, move that into the refresh register, and at that point, it should fall back down to zero. So we should see this refresh register go from zero, zero, to, and then count up, and then be set to FF, and then count up. Okay, so I've got my EEPROM in. I'm going to put a clip on that, because I already put it in my logic analyzer. So this is the... Uh, this is the chip select of that EEPROM, just in case something goes wrong, so I can watch that chip select. And, uh, okay, let's go ahead and power up, do a capture, and we've got a little bit of a problem here. Uh, not sure what's going on. I'm not getting, I'm still looking at uh, M1 back there on the scope. I'm not getting M1 and I'm not getting anything out of this processor. You see, this is just dead. My bus request is high. My weight is high. The clock is ticking. Refresh is not doing anything. And M1 is doing anything. This is not doing anything. Finger test isn't doing anything. I, nothing's warm here. The current is fine. I'm not burning anything up. It is it, that EEPROM is good. That's a known good EEPROM, so I'm not worried about that shorting something out. Uh, I can check. I've still got... I've still got... Uh, well, I've still got a clock, so I've still got 5 volts. I've got a good 5 volts on that. So this is odd. This has a good 5 volts. Uh, all of the things that could be stopping it are at the logic value they should be. Uh, let me force a reset on this because I did put that jumper in there. Maybe maybe that wasn't a good idea to put that jumper on the reset. Uh, reset is 28, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. No, reset is 26. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, so I have a jumper on that. I probably should have put a resistor on that. Okay, let me turn the power back off because I don't want to sh just t short that reset to zero to ground because if that J4 is five volts, that's just going to destroy that. So let me see how far away from ground that is, uh, or how far away from 5 volts. 
that jumper is. So I have my ohm meter on. I'm going to put that on the jumper I just put in. And I'm going to check that to 5 volts. OK. One of these resistors is already pulling that up, because that's 20K to 5 volts. So let me, I'm glad I checked that, but let me look at, that's the jumper. It's coming up here. So that's this resistor right here. So now I'm back to probing more of this board that I didn't think I was going to have to do. OK, so that's a short, and that's 20K. OK, so that's something else that I want to make a note of, and that is that the reset has a, it comes in from plus 5, it goes through a 20K, and then it goes to J4, and then across J4, and then it goes into the reset. OK, so I, I wasn't thinking. I probably should have put a resistor across those, uh, and but I just put a jumper across that. And I'm glad I thought about that before I shorted that, because that would have caused a, if it weren't for that 20K, that would have caused this 5 volts to go right to whatever I touched that to. OK, so. That's good. What that means, what that all means is that I can take this reset line on the Z80 to ground, and I'm protected by that 20K resistor. So I'm not just shorting out that to ground. OK, so glad I checked that. Back, But this time, look at that. I powered it up. And the first time I powered it up, and the waveform is there. So I don't even need to jumper it. Let me do that again. Okay, this time I powered it up, and I've got no instruction fetches. There's no M1. So that shows me that uh, the good news is the last time I powered it up, I had T states, or I had, it was actually fetching instructions and everything. It was going through everything normally because I was getting the M1. So that means that there's nothing wrong with my EEPROM. So that's good. Confirm that. Let me ground the, the, let me do a reset on this by grounding that. And, OK, as soon as I lifted that from ground and put it into a reset, uh, it took off. So what that tells me is I'm going to need to add a reset button to this because uh, that's, of course, just hanging out there. Because when this powers up, either my power supplier, for some reason, when this powers up, it gets into a, a nasty state that it doesn't like when it actually is getting code out of that. So. That was a bit of an aside that I wasn't expecting, but that's just the way this goes. You know, you just work through these problems one at a time. You see what comes up. You solve that problem. You look at the next, do the next step, see what comes up. You solve that problem, so forth. Okay, now I forgot where I was. Uh, okay, put the code in this. Oh, yeah, this is the code that I wrote to look at that refresh register. So let's do a capture here. And let's look at this code. So we can see, let me get this. So let's look at our refresh line. So down here at the bottom, this A0 through A7, those are our refresh lines. Or I'm sorry, those are our address lines that are going out to do a refresh. We can see I'm triggering on the rising edge of the actual refresh. Here's M1. So these are the instructions coming in. So you can see if there's a rising edge on the refresh, that was actually, uh, it was reading an instruction in versus, you know, all the reads. So there's more reads down here than there are M1s, because anytime it's getting a data byte, it doesn't count as an M1. So the number of reads and the number of first machine instructions or first machine states aren't the same. There's more reads because it's getting data some of the time. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, here, the refresh register is zero. It increments to 1, it increments to 2, and then it goes to FF. 
it increments from FF and it goes to 80. Remember that most significant bit is going to stay set because I set that with the FF. So the most significant bit isn't going to change until I set it again. It would normally now just count from 80 all the way up to FF and then roll back over to 80. What we're seeing here is the refresh register counting up. It's always just counting up. It increments every time it does the M1 and then it's getting reset to zero with the instruction. It counts up and then it gets reset to FF. It counts up, it rolls over, counts up 80, 81, 82, back to 00, and so forth. So this is really fantastic news. This is what I would say the first time that this board has ever actually run code. I'm pretty sure it wasn't running code, as I mentioned earlier, because it didn't have these jumpers in it. It didn't have that resistor that biased the clock properly. Uh, so yeah, I think this is the first time that this uh, runs code. So that's pretty exciting. So, you know, the third of, uh, what is this? This is uh, April. The third of April, 2021 is the first time that this 40-year-old board is running code. Okay, well, that's pretty exciting for one day. Get this board up and going. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little reset switch uh, on this back here somewhere so that I can reset this and get a good clean reset on this processor, stop it from latching up or whatever its problem is with my power supply when I first bring the power up and it latches. I may also put a uh, little uh, D latch out here on this breadboard area and capture, maybe with an LED, and capture that uh, A7 so I can have a little heartbeat LED, and I, I may actually go and, and put an octal latch out there so I can capture the top eight bits also, but I'll at least put a little LED and a latch out there so I can catch that heartbeat. And I'm gonna put in this 8154 uh, IO and start writing some code for that. That should be interesting. It should be a lot like the 8255 that Intel made. This was just a National Instruments series of products to go along with the 8080 the 8154 was. So that should be fairly straightforward to start writing code for that. And once I get this going so I can have a serial port on this, then I can just port over my monitor and my confidence code from my confidence test from my uh, SBC85 project. All right, so that's it for today. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Talk with you later. Bye-bye.